looking for the mystery beneath the northern star looking for the pot of gold at the rainbow's end hoping that I'll find it soon beneath the gypsy moon Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest. Today we have Brett Simus on the show. He's running for Selectman, candidate for the Board of Selectmen here in Upton, and welcome, Brett. Thank you. Is this your first time ever running for Selectman? It is, absolutely, yes. It is your first time. It is. Before we get going, what, what made you want to do this? <laughs> oh, a lot of things. I think, you know, first and foremost, it's the, the, the passion and connection I have to the community and the people around me, um, and really the commitment to Upton. My family's here. My brother and sister-in-law just moved to town with their two young children. So, you know, though we're relatively new to town, I think we're going to be here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a service-minded uh, individual, and my family is service-minded, and that's something that we believe in, mm -hmm. and we want to, you know, bring what we can to the town of Upton to help make it better. And you've been here three years, right? Three years, yeah. yeah. Where'd you come in from? We lived in Northbridge in Whitensville. So did I. For seven or eight years. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. yeah. What yeah. street were you on? We were on Carpenter Road. Oh, I know it well. It's, yeah. uh, it's off of Goldthwaite? That's right. Oh, That's right. That Great one. spot. Beautiful reservoir yes. there. It was a real nice place to live. Yeah, I used to live there. I was closer down towards um, North Main, that yeah. area, yeah. heading for Walmart. Yeah, yeah. All right. Nice area. Here come the questions. Great. Are you ready? And by the way, I want to make sure that everybody knows that all candidates who are running are very welcome to come on be my guest, all right? Uh, everybody's welcome. Get that across right now. Mm -hmm. So, Brett. Yes. What would you give us a quick profile of yourself? Sure, thank you. Um, I'm 44 years old. Been in town a few years. Uh, I have a wife, Tiffany. Uh, three children, Jack, Lily, and Victor. Uh, nine, five, and three, respectively. Uh, I work at Fidelity Investments. I'm um, vice president of transformation there. Been there for 14 years. Um, always worked in the financial services industry. Always been very active in the communities that I live in. Um, I spent some time in Worcester just after I graduated from college, and when I was there, I volunteered for the Worcester Elder Services mm -hmm. as what's called an elder companion. So spent time with folks that were on hospice or um, needed daycare during the day, and I would go and visit and talk with them. Um, and then when I moved to Sutton, um, I was there for uh, about uh, three or four years and got involved with that community doing various uh, levels of volunteering. And then in Northbridge, of course, uh, most recently, I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals there mm -hmm. for six years, spent two years on the Planning Board, and was Chairman of the Planning Board when I left to move to Upton. So That's quite a lot. You know, I think I lived in Whitensville, Northbridge for about nine years. Okay. I don't know if we left in, uh, I think, 2003? We got there in 2007. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just missed you. Just missed you. All right. Now, what brought you to Upton? Um, it was clearly the, the community, the aesthetic, uh, the school system, um, the open space, uh, and really just the overall feel of the town and its location between 495 yeah. and 146 is fantastic. It's centrally located. But I also noted, because I'm you know someone that really appreciates nature and the environment, mm -hmm. and uh, the proximity to the main roads and the fact that it's in between really gives it an air of uh, naturalness or nature and the, with the state forest and all the open space. So my family enjoys the outdoors. We mm -hmm. appreciate all the outdoors and the connection that that has to family and health and all that. So you're, you're that's really what attracted really us. Really located in a great location for medical care. Yes. You got. You can't beat it. You got UMass out in Worcester. You got Milford yes. right up the street. Yeah. Um, that's really good. That's right. My wife actually works at UMass Memorial. She did what department? Uh, she's in the obstetrics and gynecology oh part department. Gosh. I had my yeah. son at Memorial. Oh, did you really? Yes, I did. Wow. Just before they redid the maternity ward. Really? It was born in 92, and they 92. just shifted it after okay, that. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm um, sure my wife knows your uh, knows whoever your physician was. She's uh, been there for 15 years. So. I'll think of it. Okay. All righty. What do you want? Why do you want to be a selectman? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, it's to make a positive impact on the town of Upton and the community um, for the sake of all the folks that live here, um, all the different groups, uh, all the folks involved and not involved, but if you're a member of this community, um, I believe in making it better, and that's really why I want to be Selectman. I don't have any 
uh, political agenda. I don't have any access to grind. I'm a fairly objective person. I love gathering information and learning as much as I can about a particular issue before making a decision. Um, and I think that it, it's an important thing to do to serve the community. And, you know, I have some experience. Um, I don't claim to know everything. I have a lot more to learn, um, certainly about this community uh, and the different issues. Mm -hmm. But I think it's something that's achievable. I think you can do it. And when you do it, I think you really can make a difference for the community and make, make Upton a better place for everybody. What skills do you have that you bring to the table that you think would be helpful? Yeah, I, I have a lot of experience and have spent my career and my personal life um, as a bit of an arbitrator. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in collaboration. I believe in talking with people and understanding all sides of an issue um, or an argument whenever they come up. Mm -hmm. I believe in being very collegial and respectful of each other uh, in listening. And those are skills that have served me well both in my uh, career as well as in my personal life. I well, was the, you're good at finances, right? I'm good at finances. <laughs> you have a lot of patience for that. I have a lot of patience for that and, and learning, right? It's yeah. not an exact science and, yeah. and frankly nothing is. So you just have to gather information, make decisions when you need to. And uh, Brett, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Merrimack College for undergrad in, in Hampshire, right? North Andover. North Andover, okay. Yep, and got a degree in marketing and a minor in economics. Mm -hmm. And um, then I got my master's in business administration from Babson College mm -hmm. in Wellesley. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, that's my education. Up? I grew up in Tewksbury, Mass., and then in Harvard, Mass. So we moved to Harvard uh, during my high school days. So similar town to Upton, um, you know, great schools, um, lots of open space, small. Uh, intimate community, folks really got along and, and had a network and there were always um, you know different discussions that people had about different issues and different perspectives but that's normal but uh, I learned a lot about that community, have a lot of great connections, mm -hmm. met a lot of great people there the same way I think folks in, in Upton would really experience, so Brett, very similar. You're talking with, uh, with Brett and Simus and I got that one right. He did something that I think is extremely wonderful and that is you were a volunteer in hospice I picked right up when I when oh, you said that. I was. That yeah. takes a very special person. Whoa. I I learned. I'm just an intensely curious person. I <laughs> love meeting all types of yeah, people. Me too. Um, and the things I learned from the folks that were on hospice were um, unmatched. I think the perspective you get from talking with someone that's lived 85 years yeah. and knows that their death is imminent, and it's a sad thing for a lot of people around them. But most people in that space are reconciled to what's happening and so being able to communicate and talk with them in a time in their life when they really want to share in a very honest and authentic way mm -hmm. what life is about for me was really enriching and uplifting and so it was great to be able to help people through that transition. Are you doing it now at all? I'm not doing I'm it doing now, it no. I'm doing it now. Boy, that must have been a gift to have you there, but let me tell you. How do you, Brett, how do you position the role of selectman in a town manager environment? Yeah. How do, you pre how do you see that? Well, I, I mean, I look at the Board of Selectmen and the role of a selectman in a town with the town manager as being one, you know, we're really shepherds and stewards for work and items that go on to the warrants that are voted on by the town. We get one vote, just like everybody else. Um, the town manager has a lot of responsibility to help out. I don't think we could, you know, function the way we function. Uh, without an effective town manager. There's a lot that town managers bring to the table and we've got to be really mindful about that. It's an expense mm -hmm. but there's a lot of benefit there and I think that you, you're either going to have that work being done by volunteer selectmen that are working part-time and have varying degrees of expertise mm -hmm. uh, in town government, in state government, in the connection with the state government yeah. and that's really the value a good town manager can bring to the table is understanding the policies, the processes, what's going on at the state level, the grants that are available. Most town managers pay for themselves by the amount of grant money they bring in. I think last year we had about $800,000 brought in, mm -hmm. uh, $230,000 for the Fowler Street Bridge. So there's a lot of good work that can be done in that role, but like everything else in town, you need to be vigilant and be attentive to uh, the people, the work, the impact they're having on the community mm -hmm. and make sure we've got the right balance and checks and balances around all the folks that are working in the town. Brett, what do you see as some of the hot buttons uh, if you were elected that you could deal with? Sure. I think this ties back t for me a little bit to the role of the selectmen. There's certain things that selectmen can fix 
and cannot fix. We certainly have a strong voice in town. Mm -hmm. We have one vote. And my objective really is to talk to all the various factions in town, different groups, the, the talk to the folks at the VFW, talk to the folks in the Bloomer Girls, talk to the folks in the Women's Club. <laughs> well, you're very they welcome all, at the Bloomer Girls. Oh, wonderful. Well, th thank uh, you for that. Well, oh, the yeah. Men's Club and the Bloomer Girls have a great relationship. <laughs> yeah, and, okay. and, I've, and I've got to digress for a second. The, <laughs> the services and the groups in town mm -hmm. in Upton are second to none. The fact that you've got a strong parent teachers organization, you've got great teachers, you've got a, a good VFW here, you've got the men's club, the Bloomer Girls, the women's club. These are all institutions that can really help not only increase engagement and volunteerism in the community, which I think is vitally important mm -hmm. to the um, to the health and the vitality of the community, um, but also serves as a good uh, partner to town government to get things done, to bring in fireworks, to support people in town that might have a need, to bring people meals, and to do all that type of work. And uh, it's a real asset to the town. It's something that I would value very much. Right, now let's see. Will you be in support of the Blackstone, what the BVT budget is proposed? Yeah, so I was actually at that meeting <laughs> um, a couple of days ago where they did the annual budget review. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that given that the budget is 70%, uh, of the town budget, the school budget is 70% of the town budget. Of all the places that we look for savings and for efficiency and effectiveness, how we're spending dollars, the school budget is the most important place to look because it represents such a large percent of the percentage of the expenditures of the town. Uh, the budget as it's proposed I think is relatively um, flat mm -hmm. once you take into account the required salary adjustments the health care. So I think it was at about between one and a half and two percent. I want to say about 1.6 mm -hmm. percent increase over last year. So that's a little less than what the uh, required increase um, could be uh, yeah. given those colas and the increase in health care and salaries. So I think that it's it's conservative from that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so so right now you know, I, I think it looks okay. I'd really want to go through it with a fine tooth comb. And I did ask some questions at the meeting to really try to understand some of the things that, frankly, I hadn't seen before and didn't understand. Um, but I think there's probably still more work to be done there. With your background in finances, which to me triggers somebody who's great at details. Yeah. That's terrific. If you're willing to go through it, you know, that in much detail, that's much needed, right? <laughs> you you have to. Yeah. I just really believe that if you're going to serve effectively in any capacity, yeah. in corporate, private, public, volunteering, there's a lot of discussion and time that people spend talking about things that just aren't true mm -hmm. and just aren't facts. And so my approach is to really dig into the details, to understand the facts, to share those facts with people, educate them, give them the real information mm -hmm. so that people aren't wasting their own time debating an issue without the actual information. So something like a school budget, you go through it line by line. You don't have to do it five times a year. You do it once a year. Mm -hmm. You immerse yourself in what's there. You make decisions. You make recommendations. And then you move on to the next thing. We're talking with Brett Simus, and he is running for Selectman. Again, I want to explain to everybody that you're very welcome to come on the show. Anybody running uh, for office coming up here in Upton is very welcome to come on. Brett, how, before we go any further, how could somebody reach you if they had questions? Uh, they can call me on my cell phone, 617-275-9916. Uh, I'm open to the community. I think that anybody that's serving in a capacity like Selectman needs to be open to the community. They can send me an email at brettsimus at gmail.com mm -hmm. and I'll respond to questions and inquiries there or if the folks uh, frequent the little coffee bean you can come and meet me oh, for coffee sometime. You go there a lot, um, huh? I go there several times a week, yeah. You like absolutely. it? So there, I, I have, love it. I've had breakfast there. Is their coffee good? Their coffee's fantastic. Coffee they have more choices for coffee. If you can't find a coffee that you love at the little coffee bean then you probably don't want to be drinking coffee. They've got like 30 different flavors of coffee. Like great. peppermints and things like this? Really? Everything. I didn't know that. Absolutely. I thought all we had was really Dunkin'. No, nope, they have all, all sorts of coffee I'm a in Starbucks there. Starbucks nut though. Great. <laughs> love Starbucks. All right, back to the table. <laughs> Will you be in support of the Menden Upton budget as proposed? Um, the school budget? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so um, I think we just uh, talked a little bit about that. So I would say, you know, yes, as it's proposed, I would be in support of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's based on the cursory understanding that I got 
Um, I think that there's still more to learn. I still want to go through it line by line. There's still some time to do that. Um, the state budgets don't get approved until later on in May, mm -hmm. and then we've got till June, uh, the end of June, I think, to really formalize it and know what the final numbers are. Mm -hmm. And I think there's always work to be done there, but I think that, you know, they're not, lo certainly they're not in a position to look for any sort of override. We're well within that uh, constraint. We just had that override a couple of years ago, um, and I don't think anybody wants to go near that for at least several years. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's a relatively conservative increase to the budget, um, but again, without knowing all the facts and figures and the details of those line items, you don't know where we can squeeze out some more efficiency and, and take out some costs um, and give some money back to the taxpayers. So mm -hmm. if we can do that, we always should. Very good. Now, the last would no, it's not. Uh, let me see. How would you plan to influence town budget when it comes out? Yeah, you know, the, I think that the biggest thing that we can do um, to influence the town budget is is twofold. It's one to work with the finance committee to really make sure that we're wringing the most efficiency possible mm -hmm. from the money that we're spending. Um, there is waste in every budget. It's not unique to Upton. It's not unique to town government. Every organization, every entity that spends money, you know, I spend a lot of years doing process engineering and working on efficiency and trying to save organizations money, and a town budget is no different. So what you have to do to find that waste is you have to dig into the details, you have to understand the details, and you've really got to put pressure on folks like the Finance Committee to help identify those areas of opportunity. Nobody knows the budget mm -hmm. as well as those folks in the Treasurer's Office. So we want to make sure that we work with them, we partner with them to understand the details, to wring out any waste that we've got, and then to influence folks appropriately in the town because the town ultimately votes on the taxes. It's not the selectmen, it's not the Finance Committee. Like I said, we get one vote. Um, so it's really up to us to educate the town to be a voice for the details that are in there, provide the town with the summary and information so that they can come and vote what their priorities are. All right, any thoughts on changes in police, fire, DPW operations? Um, you know, I, I met with um, Chief Bradley yeah. at the police station and he runs a wonderful department over there. I'm meeting with Chief Goodell uh, later today. Mm -hmm. uh, I plan to spend time with the full-time firefighters, the part-time firefighters, meeting more folks in the police force, uh, meeting with uh, Vincent Roy to mm -hmm. go through the DPW operations. Um, there's several departments in town that I need to meet with. Yeah understand their departments, understand their issues, uh, understand their budgets, understand their needs. Um, I'm not in a position now to, to recommend or say I would make any uh, changes. I think all of the departments are working um, well. Mm -hmm. They're certainly providing the services that they are expected to. I think there's always opportunity to work on you know, uh, various issues that come up that are raised and the key with any of these departments is you let them run, you let them run well. If there's opportunities to help something run more effectively, more efficiently, yeah. from a personnel perspective, from an operating perspective, from a budgetary tools and services perspective, you've got to evaluate that real careful, listen to all sides um, that are involved, and really work hard to help, again, mediate, to find common ground, to get people to work together towards a common goal, to really bring folks together to make Upton um, you know, as good a place to be as it can and to make all these departments function as well as they can. It's interesting, Brett is, um, he lived in uh, the Whitens Whitensville part of Northbridge, yes. right? So did I, many years. And uh, I remember I used to follow the selectmen's meetings on television. I knew it's a lot of the people on there. Yep. But I think every town is a different animal. It has oh. a different environment or, what is the word, ambiance yeah. when you go in there. Yes. But did, did that interest you for in, at, when you were back then? And then when you came to Upton, you thought I'd like to do it? You know, it's, it's funny. Um, um, my first reaction when folks suggested that I run for select yeah. was, I haven't been here long enough. I haven't. I don't have yeah. enough town experience because I know that um, the various groups in town are all different. So the the administrative part of being selectman is the same. Yeah. Um, the nuances of the town are all different. So, um, but what they reassured me was my experience in Northbridge and Whitensville on the planning board would be helpful mm -hmm. because I understand the administration so I can focus my energy on understanding the issues, the people, the departments, the opportunities, mm -hmm. and less on learning the administrative part of town government. But to your question, when I was in Northbridge and Whitensville, I had Board of Selectmen there. 
yeah. uh, that were asking me and grooming me to run for selectman. Mm -hmm. And you went, so, why didn't you? Um, well, I had just been on the planning board yeah. for two years and was chairman of the planning board and I had started to get approached when people saw how I manage the planning board, how I work between developers um, and folks around and residents that lived in their developments mm -hmm. or around their developments and really helped facilitate a healthy effective dialogue and you know uh, between those different groups I think that's when what I was doing and how I operated really became apparent and visible mm -hmm. for the town and that's when I had folks in town as including some of the selectmen come to me and really encourage oh, yeah. me to, to run. So, so it sort of like became like a little <laughs> it, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it made me realize I could do it. Yeah. Frankly, it's not something I ever ever imagined when I was a child or, or um, you know, an, a young adult. But uh, it, it's come to be something that I think is really valuable. It's great for my children and my family. They all support me, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's just a lot of good things that you can do to serve the community. We're talking with Brett Simus, and he is running for a position as selectman in town here. Brett. Just we're kicking back now, talking like living here in town. Yeah. There, there used to be Rebecca's restaurant. Is it Rebecca? Used to be in the center of town. Yes. She moved yeah. over the other side. She did. What would this is you like? What, what would you like to see over there? Anything in uh, that vacant building? In that vacant building. Oh boy. You know, it's interesting because when I read through the town's master plan, yeah. um, which which is probably due to be revised. By the way, it was done in two thousand five. Uh, one of the things that the folks in town really were interested in were vibrant town commons that were built around pedestrians, um, that were built around street parking and having access and some place for folks in the community to gather, to go, um, to maybe do a little bit of shopping. So, you know, I, I think it it's, can be difficult, frankly, to have a small business uh, in a town like Upton that's a bedroom community, but mm -hmm. that's a great location. Yeah. There's a, certainly a lot of traffic there, so I think it's a... Parking's a problem. Though. Parking is a problem, there's, mm -hmm. there's no doubt, and that's mm -hmm. why sometimes a redesign of these uh, downtown areas is worth looking at. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it would make sense in West Upton Center because it's fairly developed. Maybe in Upton Center there's something you can do. For that specific location and that specific property, you know, what makes sense? Uh, Another restaurant, certainly everybody likes those kinds of places, yeah. um, but really it's a function of doing what we can to attract the right businesses to come into town because I think people want to enhance the tax base with some businesses, yeah. but you also have to be mindful of the aesthetic of the town, the character of the town, the essence of the town, and make sure that we're not disrupting that by over-commercializing bringing in the wrong types of businesses that affect the fabric of the community mm -hmm. and so that's a great high profile spot so I do think it's important to get the right the right kind of business in yeah, there. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think about what would be kind of fun to have in yeah. there. You know, everything from maybe, maybe CVS is too commercial, but it's, you know, it's kind of a bummer to have to either go out to Grafton or to yeah. White and Sill. Yeah. It'd be nice if we had something right there. Yeah. We used to have a very an old pharmacy right there but then yeah. they they left, and then we yeah. had Rebecca's. I don't think, no, I yeah. think there was a real estate agent after the pharmacy. Was there? Okay. Yeah. And I know Rebecca's, that was the second spot that Rebecca's moved to, right? I think. I know. Now she's over near the, the senior center. She's across from the senior center, yeah, which, which is uh, a great location. Any ideas for the senior center and our library about getting a little bit different? Yeah. Location? Well, the senior center is an, interest an interesting place, and again, a great, a great service and thing to have in the town. I. Um, one of the things that uh, the men's club does is provide senior dinners there ten times a year. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been blessed to be a part of some of those dinners and I bring my children to go and serve at the senior center um, for those dinners. And it's a great experience. It's a great opportunity to teach my children about service and volunteering. Yeah great opportunity for them to interact with the seniors and it seems like the the folks there really enjoy having the kids around which is great Definitely. Um, but to your question ideas for the senior center you know I know that there are conversations about moving the senior center or finding a different location or a better location some people have tied that to the possibility to do a library move mm -hmm. um, you know there's the 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 library trustees that are looking at you know a new location and trying to find land and you know it's it's challenging because I do think um, the library functions now um, I think that uh, there's a lot of opportunity to to do things better and you can do it in that location the building may need some work you can look at finding land you can look at moving it to another location I know the town um, is under a PNS to buy the the church in the town center. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's various opportunities that that 
we can take advantage of given all the assets that we have in town, both land, buildings, um, and, and possibilities of renovating existing buildings. Mm -hmm. Before I had a strong opinion, frankly, on any changes to what's going on at the Senior Center or anything what's going on at the library, there's a lot more information to get and a lot more facts I to know. understand. I know you, you see Grafton spreading out and you see Shrewsbury with their brand new library, Northboro. Yeah. And we think, you know, that would be kind of nice to have here too. It would be. Yeah. It would be. I think, uh, and I think the function of a library in the communities has changed over time. Yeah. Um, certainly, you need to have the books. You want to have the reference material. Computers. You want to have a place to go. Yeah. At the same time, you need computers, you need access. I, I think a lot of libraries that are successful are, are hosting and facilitating a lot of programs. Oh, yeah. Kids programs, yeah. reading the programs, activities. craft programs, combining that with mm -hmm. seniors. There's nothing better for children and for senior citizens than to get together. Mm -hmm. The energy that's created, the wisdom that's created. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all know it from having our own children, right? Yeah. Nothing makes you feel young than hanging around with children. Well, you and nothing <laughs> makes children feel more, more loved and content yeah. than being with people that really care for them. Yeah. Um, so I think there's some interesting ideas and opportunities there, but we really have to look at what the impact is on the overall design of the town, yeah. um, the aesthetic we're after, and how we want to make the best use of, of the land, property, and assets of the town. Brett, we're going to wind this up. How about a few last words to our watchers there, our viewers? Well, I, you know, I would say first, I'm um, thank you for the time. Uh, I really appreciate it. I know people's time is valuable. Um, I know people's hard-earned dollars are valuable. Uh, I'm humbled by the opportunity uh, to serve the town, to serve all of you, the taxpayers, the great people that live in this community and make it what it is. And uh, I would appreciate, you know, your support and your questions and your feedback. If there's, you know, anything you think I should know about town, government, politics, history, otherwise, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Like I said, I'm very curious to learn more, and I look forward to serving all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Brett, very much, and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time I'll be my guest. Riding on a shooting star Heading out toward a dream Tomorrow's even closer than it seems Moving through the cloudless sky Heading out toward the moon